Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. This is God speaking here again. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free. Remove the chains that bind people. This is all about freedom. This is freedom here. God is talking about. Share your food with the hungry. Giving. Love. Uh, give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need him, them. Do not hide from relatives who need your help. When your salvation will come, then your salvation will come like the dawn. And your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward. And the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then, when you call, the Lord will answer. Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. rumors. Feed the hungry. Help those in trouble. Then, your light will shine out of darkness. And the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. And the Lord will guide you continually, giving you, giving you water when you're dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an over, ever-flowing spring. Some of you will rebuild the desert ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Don't pursue your own interests on that day, but enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with its delight as the Lord's holy day. Honor the Sabbath in everything you do on that day. And don't allow, and don't follow your own desires or talk idly. Then the Lord will be your delight. I will give you great honor and satisfy you with inheritance, the inheritance I promised to you and your ancestor Jacob. I, the Lord, have spoken. Now I understand for us Sabbath law doesn't apply. You know what Jesus said about Sabbath. We're, we're under grace, not under the law, but here he's talking to the children of Israel, but apply this to your own heart however it fits. However it works, apply it to your heart. This is what this message is about. So here is what God wants from each one of us. He wants our hearts. He wants our hearts to have him as our one and only God. When Israel went whoring after other, other, other gods, that's when God's judgment fell sharply on them and heavily so that's why i stress make sure you do not have anything dear not even your own child remember when jesus said if you love mother father children or son or daughter more than me you are not worthy of me so that's that's all that is saying if there is something more dear to you than jesus then you're not worthy of him and that doesn't mean you shouldn't love your parents, by the way, or your kids or your children. That's not saying that. Uh, so we as a congregation can... Uh, so everything else is secondary and must take a back seat to him. And we here as a congregation can start a revival if we will all humble ourselves before God and truly let him have his way within our lives. So this is my prayer. Uh, in uh, Galatians 1, I didn't give Brendan this verse, it just simply a part of the verse. When it pleased God, that's where Paul is saying, who separated me from my mother's womb. He will come in his own way, and may, be, and, and, and may he answer according to my sincere, ser, sincerity. As servants of God, we must learn to make room for him to give God elbow room. We plan and figure and predict that this or that will happen, but we forget to make room for God to come in as he chooses. Would we be surprised if God would come into our meeting or into our preaching in a way we had never expected him to come? Do not look for God to come in a particular way, but do look for him. The way to make room for him is to expect him to come, but not in a certain way. Don't put him in a box. This is how he's going to come. No matter how well we may know God, the great lesson to learn here is that he may break in at any moment. We tend to overlook this element of surprise, yet God, God never works in any other way. Suddenly, God meets our life when it pleases God. Give your life so constantly... Keep your life so constantly in touch with God that his surprising power can break through at any point. Live, a constant live in a constant state of expectancy. 
and leave room for God to come in as he decides. This was inside from Oswald Chambers here. So it, it all starts right within each one of our hearts. Let our cries reach the throne of grace. Let, let's challenge ourselves. Let's provoke one another in hearing from, in, uh, into hearing from and serving the living God with the help of our Savior, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and we can change Steinbeck one and, and Canada one little uh, state at a time. Our, starting from our, ourselves, our homes, our schools, we can start. We can be incredible, strong salt to make a difference. So judgment is stayed back. I was telling uh, my wife and Brendan this morning about, about Jonah, the story of Jonah. If we obey God, we can be salt and even avoid accidents around us. Pe things, good things will happen even to people that are around us because we're strong salt. But if we become like Jonah and disobe disobedient to his message, we bring even the ones, the people into trouble that are around us. Remember, the ship went down and they refused. They, they, they had to do a, 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 a cast a lot to find out what the, who the culprit is. And it turned out it was Jonah. And when they threw him overboard, it, everything calmed down. Let us not be that. But let us rather be salt that is a strong preservative that keeps judgment back. And until we are gone, then God will pour out his wrath. Uh, according to see as to as he sees fit amen and amen this is my portion of the message may the lord bless you and touch you in every way isn't god good everybody agree yeah. one guy two three Wait, you haven't seen the last of it. Today, I have a revelation. How many of you like revelations? Do you believe them all? Well, this one's in the Bible. So, we're going to talk about it. There's a revelation of peace that a person gets when he becomes born again. You're at peace with yourself. You know you're going to heaven. You know that you know that you're on the right track. And that has carried me throughout my life wasn't afraid of anything. I enjoyed life in the worst of times because I knew I had this incredible God that's going to take care of me. But there's another piece which I've never really experienced till I hit the hospital. Have you ever wondered when you read uh, where they kill God's people and they go, like their stories, they go to be killed singing in their hearts, rejoicing in God. There are those who just can't wait. When I woke up from my drama, or from my whatever situation I was in, I was at total peace. And I want to explain it to you a little bit. Isaiah chapter 26, 3, it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in him. Who's going to keep me in perfect peace? Thou. Who's the thou? 
The Holy Ghost is the Thou will keep Dave in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. I was in the hospital and I was so at peace. It was almost like I wanted to stay there because I had absolutely no worry. When they come to do uh, operations, I would simply tell God, you're going to guide their hands. You're going to make sure they don't make a mistake. Guess what? He did. That was when I was out of the coma. Whatever operation, I had a few of them. They performed. One day they told me they found an ulster, finally. And then he said, well, we'll have to cut you open. We'll have to extend one of your guts or intestines. At the very worst, you'll end up with a bag on the side. I said, oh no. That's not good. I know somebody who has one. So I said, Lord, you're not going to let them cut my body. And I was at perfect peace. No fear, no anxiety, completely at peace. When I came back from the operating table, the nurse said, where is this cut? There is no cut. God made sure, I said, they found the right way to fix it. Hallelujah. During this way, I had peace. I kid you not. When you come close to death, you if you have God, God will keep you in perfect peace. It's even stronger than you can imagine. You don't care. You're simply oblivious to scare, to being scared. You know you're in the, in the hands of God. There's such assuredness that you couldn't care less what happens here. You are at peace with God. I've read of martyrs. Isis was killing Christians. They smiled as they cut off their heads. They smiled. Perfect peace. Knowing where are you going? Come not only knowing, but experiencing the perfect peace. It's not only knowing you have that peace. You experience it. One nurse said to me, you must be hiding something. There is no such a thing that you can have peace like you have. I've seen you go through 10 times worse stuff than many others. You were scared. You're at perfect peace. I said, that's my God. No, no, no. I think that's your willpower. My willpower, you know where that is? Where that was, down the shore, I had no willpower. I was faced with death. I was faced with being crippled for life. But I had perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect 
He, you don't conjure it up. You don't try to say, oh, I'll have peace. No, he puts it there. He puts it there. It's like salvation. He puts it there. Thou will keep him. You, God, will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Then it goes on, Philippians 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. That's what it means. How many of us are anxious? Oh, we are. We're anxious over that, anxious over that. By, we, by the time we think God's in control of the situation, we've done a few cause words, we've done a few worryings, now we think of God. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to help. Be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, that's the key. The peace of God, which passes all understanding understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through who? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We got an awesome God. He'll keep us. I've often thought, what if I get into this dilemma? What if I get to the, into this dilemma? In my heart, deep within my heart, I know that God will take care of you. He even takes care of you when you go to the toilet so you make it on time. That's no kidding. Just think about it. He takes care of you when you go to the toilet that you make it on time. God is a good God. Not only that, he makes sure that you are going to be his for the rest of eternity. If you study the word of God, if you see the heart of God, you will know that you know that you belong to God. God is a good God, and we, as Christians, should advertise that. Not just hope they'll hear us, but advertise. Talk to people about it, because the time is coming. They will ask you for answers, and you better study your Bible to know the answers, to give them. Christians that have not studied the Bible, they'll be asked, What's, how do I live? How do I do this? How do I do that? If you don't study the Bible, you will have no answer for them. So, Keep your peace, work on it, study to show thyself you're approved of God, a workman that need not to be ashamed of yourself, because someday we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and he will scrutinize every move, every thought, we have, but by the grace of God, the blood of Christ will cover every last sin and iniquity. That's where we get a free pass 
even though we might lose some crowns. So open your heart to this. Become a blessing to yourself. Study the word. You will find out the joy, the peace that's there, that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. I will trust my Savior Jesus when my darkest doubts befall. Trust him when to simply trust him seems the hardest thing of all. I will trust my Savior Jesus. Trust him when my strength is small. For I know the shield of Jesus is the safest place of all. Jesus, only Jesus, help me trust. my heart.